Greetings and welcome, friends. Uh, yesterday, we started the great, the big idea, Amity, regarding uh, transformations. And we talked about two types of transformations, specifically translations. All right, two T words there, so don't mix those up. Translations were when we would shift something up, down, left, or right. And we also talked about reflections uh, in which we would mirror a function over the x or y axis and so today we're going to talk about two new types uh which are called stretches and shrinks right and there's actually two ways you can do this uh like so actually uh i'm just going to slide down to this i don't think all those words will be as helpful for us so let's look at uh vertical stretches first i actually think this is the easier one to think about if I multiply the outputs of my function by a number, it's going to vertically stretch or shrink the graph, all right? If I multiply by a number bigger than one, it stretches the graph. And if I multiply by a number that is between zero and one, so Amity, that's like a number like 0.2 or 0.7 or three fourths, right? That, that will s shrink the graph vertically. All right, so it'll be all of the y values will be half their original height or three fourths their original height is what we have going on. And uh, and also notice the way a shrink behaves when it's a negative. It's right three fourths of the way towards the x axis or whatever the shrink would have been. All right, and any point that happens to be on the x axis would actually have been the same because right 50% of zero is zero or right? Three fourths of zero is still zero. So there's this idea of vertical stretches and shrinks. Let's see. Uh, a moment ago, I had my students, we'll make this a linear equation again, um, x. Uh, we talked about that and we had them dealing with sliders here. And we, let's see if I can get this to be one here. There we go. Ah, blast. No. Ah, even worse. No, guys. Ah. There we go. Uh, so if I change the A value, notice uh, the bigger A is, it's vertically stretching the graph. If I make it slightly less than one, uh, that it's a smoosh, that this is less steep. And if I make it negative, it's just a mirror of either of those options, right? So negatives, it'll just be a reflection over the X axis. All right, so that's what's going on with that. So the vertical stretches and shrinks behave exactly the way you would expect them to. The horizontal ones are weird where they will behave the opposite of what you would expect. If I multiply by a big number on the inside of the parentheses, it will actually horizontally smoosh the graph is what I say. I, say, I think smoosh is way cooler than uh, shrink. But uh, there you go. And if you multiply by a number that's uh, between 0 and 1, unpredictable, that's not what I would have expected, but it actually horizontally stretches the graph out. And actually, if you look at these, you might say, Mr. Wadi, isn't a, a vertical stretch, couldn't that give me the same thing as a horizontal shrink? Right, look at these two orange graphs. They're pretty similar. And it turns out there is a way, there would be a type of vertical stretch that would produce exactly the same outcome as a horizontal shrink. All right, like if I push the graph in from the sides or if I pull it from the top and bottom, I could actually get the same outcome. Let's take a look at example three uh, in your book or packet, whatever you happen to be following along with. And uh, we're talking about stretches and shrinks. All right. Let's, uh, let's actually shrink this down a little bit so it fits on my screen. Okay, so it says let uh, f of x equal x minus 1. All right, so I'm going to graph this. Uh, what's the slope here? It, it's an invisible 1. Uh, yeah, if you're looking at all these ones, it's going to be different. But here the slope is 1. And what's our y-intercept? B is going to equal the negative 1. So y-intercept at negative 1. And a slope of 1, so if I go right up 1 and over 1, and up 1 and over 1, 
up one over one a classic line here really nothing nothing too fancy about it uh, and I can draw that line you might want to actually have your multicolored writing utensils for this problem uh, it'll probably be helpful because we're gonna have like three lines on this and it, it probably won't make as much sense without it uh, so let me draw this line I'm gonna draw it in green this time so here's my original I'll call this f of x all right so I can even name it so that way I know what's going on and uh, we talked about during the homework video today uh, that yeah you got to write arrows on the edge of your ends of your line to indicate that it travels forever right Devin that's right so uh, if I want to graph uh, f of one third of x all right so let's graph this one this one will be blue so g of x equals f of one third of x because that's on the inside inside means it will be a horizontal transformation and because one third is between zero actually uh, uh, between zero and one what does that tell me I don't know. Inside horizontal, this is an arrow. Sorry, yeah, it does look like a nine. There you go. Good point. Good point. All right, and because one third is between zero and one, and guys, if I don't know, if I don't remember, check your notes. All right, it's between zero and one, therefore, it's going to be a stretch horizontally. Oh, I just got all crazy on that. There we go. So this is going to be a horizontal stretch. And I could make a table of values for these. Whoa, man, why is my... I think it's because my mouse is dying. I'm going to shut that mouse off and just use my writing tablet. It's okay, mouse. You've served us wonderfully. You will always be remembered for your sacrifice. Uh, yes. So, uh, a horizontal stretch uh, by a factor of three is how you could think about this. So, it's the reciprocal of that as far as the stretch goes. So, here's zero, zero, so that's going to be there. All right, one times three, this is now going to be stretched out to three. This one's x coordinate is two. And what's two times three? Six, all right. This one's x coordinate is three. Three times three is nine. All right, so this is being horizontally stretched. Check out this one, negative one. What's negative one times three? Or sorry, yeah, negative one times three. It's gonna be negative three. All right, so this is horizontally stretching it by a factor of three. Uh, this one's got an x-coordinate negative two, right? You guys agree that negative two is the x-coordinate there? And negative two times three is negative six. And so my new line, my blue line, is going to be a transformation of the original parent function that is a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. All right. Uh, you could have made this using a table of values where you would have just picked your X and Y values and then multiplied all your X values by one third, or that's the same as dividing all your X values by three. But I think visually is what I'm more interested in right now. How about H of X? Let's see. I'll make this purple here. So they said h of x is equal to 3 times f of x. Now this is on the outside. Man, my voice is funny today. So because that's on the outside, it's multiplying the outputs by a number. It's going to be vertical, a vertical transformation. Oh yeah, you still got like a lot of time. All right.
Uh, so outside uh, means that it's going to be a vertical transformation. And I'm multiplying by a number that is bigger than one, right? Three is bigger than uh, one. So what does that tell me? In the case of vertical. And if you're doing your homework and you don't remember, look it up. All right. Uh, so when A is bigger than one and it's a vertical transformation, uh, it's going to be, <coughs> man, be a stretch. Man, I'm stretching my vocal cords here. Uh, so this one's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Right? And so if I take the green line here, here the Y coordinate was zero, that's gonna be at the same spot. Here the Y coordinate was one. Actually, I'll, I'll make these purple, this or orange, how about? Here the Y coordinate was that, that stays there. Here the Y coordinate was one, one times three is three. This Y coordinate was two, and I'm looking at Y coordinates because Y coordinates are the vertical coordinates. And two times three is six. This one's Y coordinate was originally three. Three times three is now nine. And all of my outputs are now three times as much. Here the Y coordinate was negative one. Negative one times three is three. Here the Y coordinate was negative two. Negative two times three is negative six. Could someone be willing to offer where this point would get transformed? What is its current Y coordinate? I know you guys are still writing and catching up. It's at negative three, and I'm vertically stretching by three, so what, where is this gonna land now? Negative three times three is gonna be negative nine. All right, so notice that the green line is being uh, vertically stretched by a factor of three. And now I'm just going to draw my new line. Right, it takes a little bit of time to get used to the idea. So I do this lesson over two days. And so it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. All right, let's, let's keep going here, Mr. Wadi. Oh yeah, my mouse died, I forgot. Oh no! I zoomed wrong again. Ah, poor Mr. Wadi. His zooming is all wrong. All right, let's see. Let's do uh, example four. Talk about some shrinks. Oh, and then we got to do both. Dude, all right, I got to pick up the pace. All right, I've been explaining it kind of slowly to make sure we get it. But it's going to be better for us the more examples I hit. So I'm going to go through this one quicker. But you guys already got your grids. All right? You guys are going to be awesome at this. It's going to be great. All right. Look at I got my grid up here. All right. Let me do this. Watch me. El más rápido del mundo. Don't pack up. Not even close. So the slope is 1. Uh, Y-intercept is 2. Uh, so y-intercept is 2 here, slope is 1, that's the classic up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Draw my lion. Uh, it got off a little bit there at the end, but that's fine. So here's my original function. Uh, we'll call this function f of x, because that's what they called it. Like so. Now g of x, they're saying, is the same as f times 4 of x. That's on the inside, right? So this is how I analyze it. The, the 4 is on the inside. So this is going to be a horizontal transformation. All right. And the 4 is bigger than 1, which in the world of horizontal is a shrink. Horizontal shrink. 
by a fourth. Right? Notice how four and a fourth relate to each other. I just flip it. So for my horizontal shrink by a fourth, zero maps to zero. Now this is weird. One fourth of an x coordinate of one is going to be a 0.25. And that might be a little hard to graph on your, your coordinate plane, but you can. So let's actually pick one that will be divisible by four, like the number four. All right, here's the number four on the original graph. It's got four as its x-coordinate. What is one-fourth of four? What is four divided by four is another way I could say it. It's one. So this point will be horizontally shrunk to hitting one. Let's see, another number that's divisible would be eight. So here's eight. What's eight divided by four? All right, so that's... So that gets shrunk right over there. Let's find uh, negative 4. Should have been right here, but my graph was a little bit off. Negative 4 divided by 4? You could have. Yep, yep. I, it was off my graph, but that's okay. Uh, and then let's look at uh, negative 8 should have been right here. And negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. And so this is a right horizontal shrink where i just because it's horizontal i i transformed all of the x coordinates right and this is why i'm glad that we have like our little animation that we were doing on desmos because uh yeah it's a little bit weirder like one example is kind of like i guess i see what happened there but when you can kind of move those sliders and see them behaving that way it's it's uh much much better all right uh, h of x is equal to one fourth. Uh, they did fourths again of that. So this is going to be vertical. Oh, I wrote that wrong, friends. One fourth of f of x. So notice we're actually referring to functions within other functions, which is kind of like an interesting idea. Uh, so let's see. So this is on the outside. What does that tell me? Yeah, it means cache me outside. That's right. Uh, so that's going to be a vertical transformation. Uh, and in the case of the vertical transformations for stretches or smooshes, because one fourth is between zero and one, is this going to be a stretch or a smoosh? It's a smoosh, right? Or a shrink is what they call it, but I like smoosh. And it's a shrink by a fourth. And because this is a vertical smoosh, I'm interested in taking all of the y coordinates. Actually, oh man, that's going to be tricky. Oh, of the oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh so here's a y coordinate of 4, and I'm taking the y coordinates and dividing them by 4. So 1 fourth of 4 is 1. We still got plenty of time, friends. Plenty of time. Uh, 8 is right here. So I'm analyzing it, the original graph from my y coordinate. A y coordinate of 8 divided by 4 is now a y coordinate of what? Vertically shrink. 8 divided by 4 is 2. How about a y coordinate of 0? What's zero divided by four? Zero, yep. And no notice I'm intentionally trying to pick numbers that are divisible by this because I don't want to uh, have to make decimal points or whatever. Uh, let's see, where's the negative four? Right here is where it would have been. So y coordinate of negative four, notice that's where negative four was. And one fourth of negative four Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you don't have to. I, I, I could. I could just, yeah. I didn't do it for all of them. I'm just showing that, yeah, it's, it's one-fourth the original. Yep, that's not a bad idea if that's going to be a visual cue for you. 
And yeah, so it's taken all of my Y coordinates this time, not my X coordinates, and it's made them one fourth their original height. And so you can kind of see the way how these stretches and shrinks behave. Well, right, that's what's interesting is this kind of uh, flopped around its y-coordinate touching being zero. The blue line was kind of uh, being stretched and smooshed where the x-coordinate was zero. So you're right, yeah, it's, it's not behaving as like a rotation would. It's a stretch or a smoosh. And yeah, later on in geometry, you'll actually talk about rotations of, of things as well. Um, let's see. I'm going to put this last slide up. Oh, I've got it, though. I've got it. And it turns out that you guys can do multiple transformations simultaneously. And this is what we were just doing in Desmos a moment ago, uh, where we have uh, a function... And I can actually change H, K, A, and even a B value if I want. And I can think about these as translations. Let's show our internet friends our Desmos. Let's make this a weird graph. And let's make B equal to 1. We'll ignore B for now. But if I slide the value of H, you notice that it's doing a horizontal transformation. If I slide the value of K, it's doing a vertical transformation. And if I change the value of A... I can flip it upside down and over and stretch or smoosh it. And so you guys will try some problems that require multiple transformations simultaneously. And that's how you would kind of analyze it. All right. And I do have a video up with, uh, with an example of that as well if you need to. But we are out of time. Thanks for watching, Internet friends. Bye-bye. Uh,